books of that sort that were Welcome to Progressive Soup. I'm David Stevenson. We're going to pretend like you're not here at the next table watching us, even though we know you are. We were talking before we came on about Donald Trump and trying to devise a profile of who Donald Trump supporters are. What's, what, what makes a person a Donald Trump supporter? And we talked a little about, about um, people that we know personally. And uh, do you know anybody personally that's a Donald Trump supporter? Yeah, I, I know yeah. some people, and you know, in, in varying professions. You know, uh, so, some of them uh, professional people, or the people uh, uh, that uh, work in the blue collar mm -hmm. uh, range. And um, what I pick up from uh, those, or, or, or from my limited knowledge of people in the blue collar range, is that they they are angry, mm -hmm. and uh, they're kind of fed up. And uh, they no longer feel uh, an attraction for the uh, traditional politician. Hmm. They kind of they're reacting against them. I uh, don't forget. There's a lot of people that lost jobs. You know, the middle class is not what it used to be. Uh, they don't feel that the economy is working for them. And so um, this this character, you know, this oddball is uh, something that they feel they want to they want to put their uh, their money behind it's uh, it's interesting uh, mm -hmm. but that's what their feelings are they don't want to hear about anyone else and they uh, they figure that uh, he's the guy that uh, they uh, they want to they want to get behind quick introduction Joe Niola Miles Ganfried and I'm David Stevenson, uh, the host of the show. Miles, do you know people that are that are Trump supporters? Yes, um, I, I would think that uh, they fit a profile similar to what Joe had said. People who feel that they're disenfranchised, mm -hmm. that they've been l left out of an economy uh, and a society that's moving ahead of them somehow, and uh, they're, they tend to be people, I believe who don't shoulder the responsibility particularly for their own lives, but rather look elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And people of that sort might be uh, vulnerable to somebody like Trump who offers a panacea mm. to them. Yeah, I'm going to make everything better. I'm going to make uh, America great like it used to be. And uh, is this, this strikes a resonance. Is that, is that code for back when whites ruled the nation? <laughs> My beats to some <laughs> Might degree. Be, yes. I, I not only know people yeah. that are Trump supporters, but I have friends that are Trump supporters. Do you have friends that are Trump supporters? Well, I, yes, I, I do. And I, I think their level of <laughs> friends and relatives that are Trump supporters, for that matter, mm -hmm. I think their level of education is is uh, another factor to take uh, into consideration. Um, uh, there's a certain uh, ag aggressive mm -hmm. uh, ness that goes with that anger. Uh, there's a certain rudeness. Uh, there's a certain uh, lack of, quote, uh, political correctness, unquote. I mean, we could be critical of political mm -hmm. correctness, but... I think the purpose of it initially was just to kind of make the people more sensitive uh, with respect to various kinds of, of issues. I mean, take, take the term crippled. He's crippled. Mm -hmm. He's, he, he can't walk like you and I. Uh, yeah. Well, they came to the conclusion that that's kind of a derogatory term. Yeah. So, you know, can we find some other kind of... Uh, adjective to describe this person, mm -hmm. and they came up with handicap. Handicap, yeah. And he felt, well, you know, handicap is a much better word than crippled, but, you know, how about, you know, physically challenged, mm -hmm. all right, or yeah. an individual with special needs? Okay, these, these maybe will help us to understand that person, a, you know, a little better. But the anger is so intense that it doesn't it doesn't feel uh, the need for any kind of sensitivity, and it just reacts. Uh, there was an incident at one of the Trump uh, rallies where uh, an individual that 
expressed opinions that were different than those of the uh, of the Trump campaign on his way out. He was literally assaulted, pounced upon, and then he was the one that was evicted. I mean, it's it's not hmm. at all. Then there was a case where a, an individual uh, that um, was. Um, uh, uh, an individual that had special needs, you know, an individual that uh, had to deal with uh, some kind of palsy that was also a uh, a TV uh, commentator. Yeah. And uh, he was he was disrespected. I maybe maybe so far as to actually Trump actually mocked him. Mocked him. Mocked him. And and it it went uh, it, it 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 was like water off a duck's back when it came to the Trump supporters. They didn't find that problematic at all. If Trump uh, says something that uh, is um, uh, abusive to women or to minorities, uh, they don't care. Uh, in my, my hope is that this segment of our society is is not in any way uh, reflective of the majority. I was uh, I was I was kind of gratified when Barack Obama had won the presidency back in 2008. Yeah. I thought, well, wait a minute, maybe bigotry and uh, racial prejudice is definitely on the wane. Maybe the the society as a whole. Has uh, has really become enlightened, yeah, really but at the like same time, in the against. back of my mind, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe they only elected him or voted for him because their uh, their economic situation just happened to trump their bigotry. Yeah, you know. So now we're seeing a different scenario. Uh, and this leads me to wonder, you know, what is the American society really made of? And then I think about what creates the society, what influences the society. And, I'm, and, and believe it or not, I think this, well, it, your parents. But in a lot of cases, parents aren't able to spend as much time with their children as they used to because both of them are in the workforce. Mm-hmm. So if both of them are in the workforce and the TV is on, yeah. then their identity is being defined by the culture. And, and the culture at the current, current time doesn't really particularly care about proper childhood identification, proper... Uh, childhood mental health they don't care about that they only really care about how much uh, they can uh, make financially uh, through the media so when a young child is Mm. finding himself in front of uh, too much violent violence in their cartoons which isn't as bad as the violence that they see in certain action movies. And it's not a question of an individual getting shot and then holding their chest like they did in the 50s, the old Mm B-Westerns. Now you're getting blood flying all over the place. You not only get violence, you get gore. Graphic violence. Uh, You know, this is... this, This is not a healthy way to... to culture... uh... A, a society. I mean, we, we have to look at what, what's going on, uh, and it looks like we can't do anything about it since the system is rigged, since the money is there, yeah. and since the money is, uh, is, 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 uh, is, is doing its greed thing. And it doesn't, it doesn't care. It doesn't care. And then what happens is, as these individuals uh, grow, uh, and, and, and their, their culture has been so defined, uh, their ability to uh, restrain hatred, their socialization so severely impaired uh, that they will purchase firearms and they will do horrendous violence to their fellow man. So uh, when you t- talk about mental health, 
it's 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 a deep rooted problem in the society. Was Archie Bunker the first bigot? Do we have the opportunity and the uh, pleasure or displeasure, as the case may be, to see on television? Was that the first show where where we got an opportunity to see people that just basically said what was on their mind and didn't mind wow. insulting other people? <laughs> there was a humorous, satiric quality to that show. Mm. Which all was, right. I, I the, 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 um, All in the Family. All in the oh, family. Yeah, Archie yeah, Bunker. Right. Yeah, there was a satiric... But, you know, I, had, I would say that yeah. this um, uh, situation that Joe was alluding to, that there is all of a sudden violence, I think that's fundamentally erroneous. You know, if you go back to the time um, of John Brown, for example, Mm -hmm. right? John Brown massacred people. He literally just about slit their throats and cut their heads off and whatnot, all right? Mm -hmm. He felt he had a cause, right? And there may have been a parcel of validity to that cause, but he was a radical, and there have been radicals throughout. Uh, Now, I think the the availability of uh, assault rifles has exacerbated that. Mm -hmm. It's made it much more graphic than it ever was. A person wielding uh, a single-shot flintlock rifle uh, is really nothing compared to one of these AR-15s, you know, let alone somebody with a knife or a sword or whatever. So it seems that perhaps uh, these... um, misfits have maybe always been there and it doesn't have anything particularly to do maybe with our modern culture it's just that their firepower has been tremendously uh, raised they can do a lot more damage I oh, mean yeah. in, uh, in, in minutes yeah in Newtown yeah. the killer was able to kill 26 teachers and students mm-hmm. in less than 3 minutes there you go without really a lot of skill. Mm-hmm. You, do, you don't have to have a lot of skill right. when you're wielding a weapon that fires repeatedly by pulling the trigger and just right. holding it down. Yes. You can spray bullets I would imagine crowd. hundreds of rounds a minute. Yeah, yeah. The, the, and, and as, as disgusting as it, it sounds, it, it needs to be said, I think, that, yeah. that every, every one of the victims in Sandy Hook School had a minimum of three bullet holes in them. Okay. These, these weapons yeah. are definitely uh, serious but it's the finger on the trigger Mm -hmm. that makes the weapon uh, an instrument of death but it's the gun that gives them the opportunity to do as much carnage as quickly as that but the gun see the gun is a reality Mm -hmm. the gun has been a reality and even back during the time of, of, of John Brown and some of the atrocities that had occurred and in his particular case you know, it's 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 question it's questionable. But the amount of socialization that should have pervaded the society from then until now, uh, the ability that we have to influence people and their behavior is so much greater now than it was then. So. Uh, is that a good I, thing or a bad thing? Or that's or both? that's the, that. That could be an instrument uh, that would work uh, in favor of enlightening the society. Mm -hmm. Or, if it's used for purposes other than that, it could help to further reduce uh, the uh, society to to people that simply respond uh, and are stimulated and respond to uh, their coarser coarser nature. Mm -hmm. Religion. Religion could be a uh, a force of of, of good. Mm-hmm. Religion uh, could be understood as an acceptable belief system mm-hmm. that would help uh, people uh, to socialize and integrate more favorably in a society. And it also, okay, could be used to force the hate, to force the alienation, to force the xenophobia. Okay, it all depends on uh, how these uh, tools are utilized, whether they be material tools like guns or they be uh, immaterial, intangible things Mm -hmm. like uh, belief systems, uh, attitudes, 
Um, yeah. Well, well it's, it's 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 fair to say that we've seen you know we've seen both the good and the bad, as you say, that religion can do. It can certainly you know the belief system of our three major world religions is all based on very good things. They are. But occasionally, but occasionally you get you get somebody that, that uses, and this this is true of, of all the major religions, and also people sometimes that are not religious will find a way to um, justify doing some pretty horrible things in the name of what they believe in. Do you all feel of that in a way, for example, we're talking about religion, but sometimes religion uh, gains its power from empowering people. People come to believe that a religious leader, um, a religious figure, or a minister, or a priest, or whatever it may be, rabbi, has himself or herself a connection to some great power. And they represent that yeah, power. Yeah, they represent the power. Sort of a messianic kind of, kind yes, of attitude, absolutely, attitude yes. that, that we've seen that, yes. that some people have had. Now, that can be true of a politician, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And we've seen that in this country going back, way back. Well, uh, not terribly far back was Huey Long, mm. right? The kingfish, yep. Yeah, the kingfish, absolutely. And he was a person who was going to... I guess put a chicken in every pot and, and make everybody happy and make everything good as long as you gave all the power to Huey Long. And that right? was the great state of uh, Louisiana. Yeah, exactly, yes. Uh, unfortunately for Huey, but good for us, somebody yeah. actually bumped him off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but six six member tyrannus, which is what John Booth yelled as he jumped off the stage, even thus to tyrants after he shot Lincoln. Exactly, who he saw in his mind's eye was um, was was somebody that was uh, okay. dicta dictatorial. Yeah, treading mm -hmm. on on his rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the rights of others. Yeah, the terrorist and yeah. the uh, and the patriot. It, yeah. it depends on what side of the uh, fence you're uh, yeah. you're talking about. But of course. There's no excuse for the violence. No, that. but with the rise of the demagogue, yeah. you know, whether it be a religious demagogue right. or a political demagogue, you know, in 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 a religious context, if you have a, if you have a a religious leader akin to a demagogue, then it's called a cult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is it called when you have a po politician, you know, whose uh, whose actions uh, reflect uh, uh, demagoguery? Mm -hmm. Ah, interesting question. Is there a difference? And, yeah. and if there is not a difference, why do we not apply the same standards yeah. to political people that are demagogic and uh, cult leaders that, yeah. are, that are demagogues? Well, I think we've used the term populist, mm -hmm. right? And that's valid. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, it doesn't have, a de it doesn't have a, the same negative a person, connotation. A person who perhaps a has a way of tapping yeah. into mm -hmm. the pent-up emotion. Yeah. And I think that uh, it's fair to say that Donald Trump is one of those people. And that's why I think a lot of people are becoming a little bit fearful about what he could potentially morph into. Right? And there is a possibility, since he seems to rail uh, against uh, the, the Congress, mm -hmm. saying, if I'm elected, give me the power mm -hmm. and I'll make everything great again. And so what he's doing is he's beginning to claw at our separation of state, of, of uh, power. Mm -hmm. He's clawing at that, and he's clawing at our Constitution. And this sort of stuff smacks of the fascism that rose during uh, the period that preceded World War II. Which is a strong word to use, fascism. It gets thrown around quite a bit, but I, I think you're right that... In, that there certainly is, in a situation like this, there certainly is an element of fascism, of, of that, uh, yes. g give, me, give me all the power and, and, and trust me and I'll take right. care of you. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said the power. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Mussolini, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. started out in his career as He's, a socialist. There's a guy that knew something about fascism because he pretty much you know, yeah. almost, almost invented the term, or at least yeah. put, it, put it to its highest and best use. Yeah. But imagine he was a socialist. Mm -hmm. He was the guy who was the champion of the Italian labor movement. 
and then he turned around yep. and he became a fascist. Yeah, well, that's what happens. Power tends to corrupt. Yeah. But so in, in other words, yeah. 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 In yeah. other words, the power is the motivating factor, yeah. and it's the wolf and the sheep's, you know, <laughs> clothing and their skin. You know uh, what I mean? Well, you know, right now I, it's kind of interesting. You, you know, you, you, if you if you're of the opinion of of quite a quite a number of people, it, it's not a, a question of of democracy anymore. It's 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 the oligarchy. Mm-hmm. It's the oligarchy of money now. So now we, we have we, we now we have a struggle between the fascist and the and the oligarchy of money, you know. Is is he going to be able to somehow or other uh, put a dent in in their uh, in their control? And, and right now it doesn't look like he's going to be able to because uh, the, the the system has been so rigged that so many millions of dollars are needed uh, for one to achieve power, and uh, he can be deprived of that. So when, so when folks that are big contributors tell a guy like Donald Trump, who in the beginning claimed that he would self-fund because he has X numbers of billion dollars that he has at his disposal, that he could run his own campaign and not be beholden to anyone, that's changed. That's changed yeah, quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, because that's they come, could, in other words, they could, ch- they could change the market value of the election. Yeah. They can say, I'm sorry, but, you know, it's going to take uh, so many billions now for you to get the kind of coverage that you're going to need in order to uh, influence the American uh, public to the extent needed to uh, win an election. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, you Let's know, there's put, something so, that I know, see, though. It's, yeah. it's a money game. Yeah. There's something that I see that really flies in the face of what you're saying. Go ahead. What I see on the Internet is, first of all, Bernie Sanders' ability to raise yeah. a, a substantial amount of money. And uh, even after the cause was pretty much lost, the money flowed in. Mm-hmm. And in addition to that, uh, there are any number of causes for which... I'm sure you get email, and I do, Mm. you know. And they are looking to raise funds Mm. for these various causes, and I assume that many of them are successful. Now, this is a departure from what we've seen. What Joe has pointed Mm. out was certainly valid, Mm. that the big money could bankroll some issue or a politician that uh, favored their view. But I think things are changing now. It's the $10 contributions, the $30 contributions that have been proven to be powerful. They are powerful. They have, yeah. And, they, they, and according to Bernie Sanders, uh, his campaign uh, uh, personnel, it, they can get five times as much money as they have raised five times as much money if he was a, a candidate in, in, the, in the general in the general uh, election. But even with all that money, uh, it's still going to be an upward climb because the media is already bought by the oligarchy money. So <laughs> then how did they, then they how, how did they hold this guy down to a mere forty five percent of the pledged delegates in a major political party running against what everyone pretty much acknowledges is a machine? Right, well, because that machine is already part of the rigged system. But how did they? How did a machine, with all the money in the world at their disposal, still only get fifty-five percent of the pledged delegates? Doesn't that okay? Speak, okay, doesn't, doesn't that speak that to speaks, what Miles is saying about? Yeah, it does about? say something about the influence and the power of, of the people. But even if he had gotten more pledged delegates than mm-hmm. he had gotten, he would have still not gotten enough. He would have still not gotten uh, the uh, opportunity to uh, run as the, 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 the Democratic uh, Party in the general election because he's not the one that they want. Well, you know, People he, might want he, him, you but know, they don't want him. He said it, and I think he's absolutely correct, and, and I've been saying it too, and you, we've all been saying is that is that he showed, he shook up the system, and he showed that if, I think it's safe to say that if he had gotten the, the more than 50% of the pledged delegates that we would have done, we would have had a case to be made to get those super delegates to come over. 
I, yeah. I think you would have had an irate public, yeah. and but that would have really moved the Democratic yeah. Party. But the yeah. rigging in a lot of those primaries. But you can only rig so much, and so we got 45 plus percent of the uh, pledged delegates. Two point, what is it? 2.5 million in California. All right, yeah. uh, still not counted. But and they'll be counted. And, and they'll be I, hold, and, hold your horses. They'll be counted, and, and we'll see what happened. And in fact, he may very well have won California. Well, he has. We'll find out. It would be nice because mm. you have the fascist running. Yep. You you would have uh, the established uh, candidate uh, running from one of the principal parties. Yep. And then you know you would have the the, the people's candidate, but the fear is that uh, if that were the case. Then uh, the, uh, the 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 game would be swayed in, in favor of of the uh, so-called fascist. So that, that and, and then fear the big fear of of the courts. And yet, and yet, didn't all the other candidates, Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, and the rest of them, all try to try to take the core arguments and the core notions of Senator Sanders and try to and try to they, glom on to them. They, they usurped them. them. They, they tried. Did that. They, they tried. tried. But it was was clear to everybody and it and it didn't it didn't help any of the other candidates that tried to do that. I mean people I think people pretty much saw through what they were trying to do and they saw who the real deal was. We just didn't get enough pledged delegates and, and that's and that's that's the bottom line. That's that's for another day. We're going on to the convention. We'll get the platform to be as much, as much a reflection of the Democratic Party that we've come to know and love, and less of the corporate Democratic Party that we've grown to dislike. You're justifying the existence of the Democratic Party by creating this little dichotomy. Fact of the matter is, uh, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are already bought. Okay, somehow yeah. or other, we need more than just these two parties that are already uh, under the uh, control of the third party, which is the money party. Well, hang on to your, hang on to your seats, folks, because we're going to come back. We're going to continue to talk through the end of this half hour. We're going to come back, and we're going to talk about political ideology. And the, you know, we talked a bit about fascism and, and oligarchy and some of these other terms that get... that. The-